In this instance, we're going to build on the idea of ways of rendering and drawing fabric. I'm going to work from this image, which I found online, and I'm going to start off this time by changing not my image size, but my canvas size. So if I look at image and I look at image size, I can make an image bigger or smaller. But if I change canvas size, then I can add more space onto my canvas. So what I want to do is I want to add some more space to the right of this image. At the moment, we're measuring things in pixels. I'm going to measure that in centimetres. I can see this image is 32 centimetres across. So I'm going to make it 64 centimetres across, doubling my rectangle. And obviously, by the nature of that, I'll also double the file size. OK, this time I'm going to draw with my drawing tablet, which is a Huion uh, signature tab, which was £19 on Amazon. And I'm going to start by finding my brushes. And I'm going to think about the size of my brush. So what kind of brush I might use, the size of the brush, and the colour. So initially I want to create something which has an overall kind of shape and feel of what I'm drawing. Just as before, I really look and focus on where shoulders are, where hips are, where legs are, etc. Trying to see the figure really simply in terms of basic shape and basic direction. the moment I'm working with a brush which is set to 100% opaque so I'm going to change the uh, opacity of the brush start to change my color And remember, what we said is that what gives a fashion drawing three-dimensionality is really two key things. Tone, so how light or dark something is. And contour, what direction is the plane falling in. The mark-making side of it can build texture into our drawing. So as I'm starting to make the drawing, I'm realising that perhaps I haven't put that arm in the right place, so I could start to adjust the position of that arm here. And what it might be quite nice is to put a background into this as well. Um, I think in terms of what I've done so far, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the figure on here so I'm going to click and drag over what I've done so far I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that so I can now if I switch the background off see this as a drawing here and I'm going to use the magic wand tool to click and delete the white background that means that when I put this back in here, but I'm working into an intermediate layer in between my background and my foreground, Let's just bring a figure up here, I could start to use things like the paint bucket tool to choose a general colour for the background. Now obviously what I've done here is I've now obliterated my photograph. So what I could have done, and what I'm going to do now, is switch that colour layer off I'm going to copy my model, so make sure I'm in the right layer to do this. Copy, 
come back now to this layer, now I'm making sure I'm in the right layer, and I'm going to paste, just so that I can see my model. So now I've got a background colour behind this drawing. Now what we talked about is the idea of the contour of the figure. So now I'm going to start to find that contour. I might change my brush to a pencil, although to be honest I might keep my brush setting and then just simply change the size of my brush. I certainly want to change the colour. So this is where we can start to think about how do we see this textile? What bits of the textile do we notice? What's the direction of the plane? And how contour can help us understand that direction and change of fabric. So here we're really looking carefully at those changes of line direction. So we started off thinking about the sort of basic shape of the figure. We've now started to think about the tone. And then next we're now starting to think about the contour. Obviously now we've started to work the drawing, we can also work back into the drawing in a number of ways. So one of the ways of doing that is to use the rubber, to rub out parts of our drawing. So actually I need to be here in the right layer. Now what I've got here is a situation where I've got some drawing here. And if I start to rub away, then obviously I'm rubbing away sections of the background. So I want to make sure that I'm rubbing away elements of the drawing. So what I might do is instead play a different game and if I use my eyedropper tool if I'm working in this layer I can choose the background colour so now that is the same colour as the background and then go to my brushes this time maybe going back to 100% I'm making my brush a little bit larger and there we go I can now start to draw back and remove sections of the drawing by working into it with the background colour. This would enable me to sort of tweak the edges of my illustration. Changing now back to a different colour and changing opacity would start to give me another dynamic part of the drawing. Next I might think about the textual qualities of my illustration and how I might convey that through mark making. So again obviously in Photoshop I've got loads and loads and loads of different kinds of brushes to choose from. I can choose different sizes of brush. 
in this instance I want something quite small and as I'm drawing with a drawing tablet anyway I've got much greater manipulation of line width And this is where I can start to play around with versions of hue as well as opacity of shape. To try to create this sort of textural version of events. Now I've made my drawing. I'm going to switch off my other layers. And obviously what you can see here is that I've drawn, without realising it, into this photo layer. So actually what I want to do is I don't really want the photograph, but I want to retain the drawing layer that I've placed on top. So I'm going to select the photograph and I'm going to delete the photograph. And obviously what I've done here is I've deleted a section also of this background. If we now switch that background layer off, I'm realising, of course, I was in the wrong layer. So let me just go backwards by pressing Command and Z repeatedly in the new version of Photoshop. As we keep pressing Command Z, we go back to an alternative state. I need to be in this layer and I need to delete this photograph. Now I've got rid of the photograph. Now I've got my figure. Now the figure, I think at the moment, if I deselect that, is a little bit on the chunky side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the image. So I'm going to go to Layer. Down here, I'm going to go flatten image. Actually, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to flatten image. What I'm now going to do is I'm now going to select my figure. And before I do that, just deselect for the moment. I'm going to go back to my eyedropper and click on my background. Now, this is obviously my foreground colour. The colour behind here, this is my foreground colour. The colour behind here is my background colour. I'm going to swap those around for the moment. Then I want to come back to my selection. So I'm going to click and drag over my image. I'm now going to hit transform. This time I'm going to hold the shift key down so I can start to reshape the figure. So making her a bit thinner. And of course, because I've got a background which is the same colour as this foreground, I can't see suddenly the white space around it. Once I'm happy with my proportions of the figure, I'll then deselect. And I've now applied that transformation. 